Awesome. Well, howdy, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christiana Bowles. I am the Graduate Assistant Sustainability Coordinator for the Department of Residence Life and also one of the co-advisors for the EcoRefs. And today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about a few of the departmental initiatives that Residence Life does to help you um, and help you educate your peers on how to be more sustainable while you're living on campus. <clears throat> So the first thing, I just want to give you guys a brief overview. Um, one of the biggest things that Residence Life has done in the past is apply for several different Abbey Green Fund grants. Actually, for those of you who don't know, the EcoRefs actually started out way back in 2011 as an AGF grant, so the more you know. And here's just a quick overview of some of the grants that we have done in the past. Um, we'll go more recent ones down here in the bottom from just last year. Um, we've also created my position, that way I can help you all become more sustainable citizens. We send various eco-reps as well as residence life staff members to the annual Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education Conference, otherwise known as ASHE. And if you did not know, um, residence life has our own sustainability master plan. So a and has its own um, plan for the entirety of campus. We have one specifically for our department that shows how residence life is going to be more sustainable over the next 30 years. And all of you have probably seen that beautiful light switch sticker cover, so that was an AGF grant that we did a while back. So the first thing that I'm really excited about, because it is coming up next month, is our sixth annual sustainability dinner and awards. So this is going to be hosted on October 23rd, that is a Wednesday, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. over in Commons 109. Dinner will be served beginning at 6 p.m., so that first half hour is just for you to mix and mingle with the various faculty staff, as well as your peers who will be there, who all share a passion for sustainability. And I'm very proud to say that this event is completely zero waste. We always have a locally sourced meal. Um, I'm actually trying to get the entire menu to begin this year so we can be as sustainable as possible. And along with that, we also have five different awards. And you can actually nominate somebody here, somebody in your hall. You can even nominate yourself. Don't feel weird if you want to nominate yourself, because I don't ask for the nominator's information, just the nominee. So if you're like, yeah, I'm awesome at sustainability, like I'm a big green tradition, or I really do recycling in my hall, submit yourself. I won't know it's you. So three of these awards, these first three are for residents and other students. One is our Friend of Sustainability Award that has been given to a Residence Life staff member. Brandon won last year. And then we also have our Green Custodians. So if one of your custodians is really going above and beyond to make sure to take out the recycling, nominate them and show them that you appreciate them. Two more things that we launched in the last year. So the first one is our on-campus Living Sustainability Guide. It's on the Residence Life Sustainability webpage. If you don't know where that is, you just go to the Res Life website, click on the Living On tab, and at the bottom you'll see sustainability. And this just provides a brief outline of what it means to live green. Um, you can see up here on the top right, there is a little screenshot of some tips that are in the guide. There's also a list of recycling information, both on and off campus, what can, what can't be recycled, where only certain things can be recycled because we do take glass just over on Adrian's lab where it's the only place we can do it. Tips on utility and energy conservation, and then contact information for various departments across campus. So the Office of Sustainability, um, Student Works does raise information is on there as the eco rep president, and some other student orgs you might be interested in. And to go along with this piece, we just launched the Green Dorm Certification. You might have seen a few of these on doors around campus. And what that is, is you can basically show your pledge to sustainability. There are three different levels that you can get certified at. The first one is acorn, then sapling, then post oak. And that just depends on how many actions or behaviors you do that could be sustainable. So for example, an item may be a drying rack in your room. And then an action could be that you're an eco rack. Pretty simple stuff. And that's just a quick Qualtrics survey. <clears throat> and once you take it, I'll count up the points as to how sustainable you are, and then I will ship that badge off to your GHD so that you can you put it on your door. My biggest thing in the spring is our annual U Challenge. And what that is, is our utility challenge. I know Ms. Brianna has participated in the past, and she really enjoyed the experience. And what this is, it's a 
a semester-long research competition that we partner with Utility Energy Services for. It's hosted by our corporate sponsors, Johnson Controls and Siemens. And we have two different levels, actually. So we have a graduate level as well as an undergrad. And we have one winning team from each level that gets a certificate as well as a monetary prize. And basically what students are tasked with is they come in on teams. We give them the data for the last two years, at a minimum, they can request more of utility and energy consumption in an assigned hall. So we'll give you a hall that hasn't been renovated in a while. And then you're tasked with providing both infrastructure as well as student engagement improvements. And then we have an initial round where you get judged by professionals as well as faculty and staff on campus. You move to a final round, we give you a lovely banquet, and whether or not your team proceeds to the final round, you get invited to the banquet. And then whether or not your team makes it to the final round and wins, all the recommendations from all the teams gets compiled into a master spreadsheet that I have. And every year when we're looking at AGF grants, I look at that list and see what we want to tackle for that year. And I'm really proud to say that if you look in the bottom right corner, there is a mock utility bill just to show residents how much they're consuming. Because obviously when you leave campus and become a real adult like I think I am, you get a utility bill rather than one that's already bumped into your room and board. So this way you can see what you're historically consuming and become a little bit more educated for when you leave campus. So that's something we actually are doing this year. That was a recommendation from several years ago. And just a few more programs that we have. So every spring we have our annual Donate Don't Duck campaign. What this is, is we have several different nonprofit partners. In the past it has been Goodwill, but we're looking to expand that this year. And they put out various um, trailers, containers around campus, so that as you're moving out, if you have any decor you no longer want, rugs, clothes, chairs, things like that, rather than throwing it away, you can donate it here. And along with that, we incorporated this past year our grocery giving grab or G3 campaign. And what a lot of you may not be aware of is that your peers, a lot of them experience food insecurity. They don't necessarily know where your next meal is going to come from. So in an effort to address this, we put out several different collection bins next to the Donate Don't Dump areas. And as students were leaving, they could put their mac and cheese, their crackers, whatever, in those bins. And their peers, who may be food insecure, could take out what they needed, no questions asked. Because there's a lot of stigma around that. So they could just take whatever they needed, didn't have to sign anything, didn't have to ask anybody. And all the food that was left over, we actually took to the local food bank, so Breast Life Food Bank, which was over 300 pounds of food that we took to them last year, which is a lot. And some more things, I actually just put these out uh, this week. So another grant that we got last year was for e-waste bins. So if you have batteries, old cords, chargers, mice, other small e-waste, you can put it in these bins, and you'll see where they're located right here. The only thing we cannot take are anything that could personal, potentially have personal information. Cell phones, tablets, laptops, anything like that can't go in there because um, it's a liability issue. But everything else you can put in. And then we also have a monthly sustainability newsletter that's also on the Res Life website. Each year I focus on a different theme. So as you can see, I've covered some recycling, the AGF, the Environmental Issues Committee, which is a part of SGA. And I'm always open to suggestions. So if there's a topic that you all are really interested in, no matter how it relates to sustainability, you can just email it here, and I will put it on the list for future recommendations. One thing that we launched last year that has been extremely successful is our Trex Plastic Film Challenge. So Trex is a company based out of Winchester, Virginia, and they make composite decking and outdoor furniture. And they use 95% recycled materials in their uh, production. So a lot of that is recycled wood and plastic film that they collect from several different corporations. It was Target, Kroger, um, a bunch of other national chains, not necessarily located in Texas. And the goal of this is to collect a minimum of 500 pounds of plastic waste, such as um, Ziploc bags, newspaper bags, dry cleaning bags, any kind of malleable plastic. So no plastic water bottles or containers. And we historically have it November through April, so it covers all of Earth Month. And if we collect a minimum of 500 pounds, we get a free bench from Trex, which you guys can actually see. It's going to be 
right outside of Hullabaloo. So if you guys want to stop by after the Eco Rep retreat, it's right up there and it's really comfortable. So we actually way surpassed this goal in six months. So last year we had over 700 pounds in four months. And you gotta think, it was really only three months because one month was when everybody was home from our break. So it's kind of insane how much plastic we generate, but it's good that it's actually getting recycled versus just going in the landfill. <coughs> And then this is just where you can find everything I've talked about here. So as you can see, that's the Res Life website. Go to the Living on Campus tab, scroll down to UC Sustainability, and it'll have all of these resources available to you, as well as contact information, links to our social media. I have a running calendar of various sustainability events, not necessarily ones I'm solely running, but others that the Office of Sustainability is having, the Eco Reps, any other student work on campus related to sustainability, it has that there as well. And then just here is my contact information if you all ever need to get in touch with me. Currently, my office is out in the Brown Modular Trailers by White Creek, but we are going to be moving to the SSB very soon. I cannot wait. There will be one window to see outside. But that is all I have. Does anybody have any questions? For the e-waste bins, I know like the you said you could recycle batteries. Is that like all batteries or is that only like rechargeable batteries? So technically we can only recycle the rechargeable ones, but we will accept non-rechargeables and probably dispose of them as well. Okay, cool. Anything else?